friends. Welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie, and if you are new here, hi, welcome. I hope you'll consider subscribing. And if you are back, welcome back. Today I'm here to join you all for a whip and chat. Whip stands for work in progress, and chat stands for chat. So feel free to whip out your whip and uh, work alongside me. I'm just going to be chatting with you guys and catching up a bit on what life has been like the past week or really the past two weeks because um, I wasn't able to put up a whip and chat last week and I'll share with you more about that in just a bit but I would love for you to just hang out with me kick back and relax um, I'm going to be working on a diamond painting you're welcome to work on whatever project uh, or uh, if I'm keeping you up in the car or whatever works for you, um, I'm just looking forward to hopefully giving you a little bit of company. So uh, let me give you a really quick rundown on what I'm going to be using today and working with today. So first, the kit I'm going to be working on is called The Daughter of the Sea King. It's actually from Diamond Art Club and the artist Mandy Manzano. It's one of the discontinued princess panels. Um, it is pretty difficult to come by, unfortunately, and I promise I'm not doing this to rub anyone's nose in it. I'll actually talk more about this kit and why I'm working on it in just a little bit. Um, but let me cover the rest of the goodies I'll be working with. Accessories, that is. Um, so I, I just recently, just yesterday for you guys, did a small shop haul and unboxed a few things that I wanted to go ahead and use in uh, this whip and chat. So first, pen wise, um, I have this pen which is from Black Wolf Woodworks, gorgeous hybrid from one of their uh, breast cancer awareness blanks and pens. And then I've also got this pen from Butterfly Effect Wares. This is in the purple prismatic pearl. Uh, the tray is from Muni Made. Um, it's one of their magic colors. The filament is, is it earth green or earth magic or something like that? Uh, it's a color shift tray. Um, wax wise, this is what I'll be using my single placer. It's a wee wax. And while um, the creative wee wax no longer makes this product, at least for now, I did want to just use this as a chance to plug my sweet friend Laura over at Anxiety Art Adventures, who created wee wax for a little while. But you guys, she has a YouTube channel and is really incredibly sweet and has some lovely content so please go give her a follow i'll link her channel below um, and then this is new for me to try out this is scented putty from excuse me designs on etsy and so this is gonna be the first time i'm using their putty i'm gonna try it out on my multi-placer i'd gotten a couple of scents this one is frosted peach berry and is from like i said excuse me designs i'll link to all these shops below of course um, this is a minder that was also new in my latest small shop haul this is from stitchy little things and it just made me happy and then um, this is something i still need to convert into a minder actually but this is a clay um, that was handcrafted and the clay itself like i said i need to attach magnets to it um, my friend Catherine brown helped me track down i actually have all of the princesses and their companions they're animal companions and I'm using this one because well we're working on the daughter of the sea king so I had to use this she's just gonna hang out and keep us company so um, let me go ahead and neither of these pens have wax in them why don't we work with the black wolf woodworks pen today and I'll try to switch over to the butterfly effect wears one at some point but you guys can just enjoy looking for the moment um, so I'm gonna load up with wax this is in the scent it's fall y'all because hey it's november it's still fall oh my gosh it smells so 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 good um i don't know if laura will ever sell wee wax again um i am certainly not going to be one to pressure her whatsoever because i know i wouldn't have the time or the mental margin to run a small shop and so I'm never ever going to tell small shop owners, actually I'm going to leave this open because it smells really, really good. I'm never going to pressure small shop owners. I'm always like, you do what you need to, to take care of your mental health and you do what works for you and makes sense. Um, and then this I did, I tested pinching off some of this actually, since I have nails on, here's probably the easier way to do it. So I'm going to use the flat end of my tweezers to just kind of scoop some out. And, um, my husband's in the background, he's gaming. Um, it's a little bit stringy. Okay. So the way that I usually handle 
loading scented putty when it comes in little containers like this is that I'll scoop out some and I'll roll it. Sorry, I was outside for family pictures yesterday or today, earlier today, and I don't know what happened, but I got like black on the ends of my my nails and it doesn't want to wash off. It's okay, I'm about to take them off anyway. But I roll it real thin and then I just use the flat end of my tweezers to kind of nudge it into the multi-placer. Um, I get my thin metal multi-placers from uh, AliExpress or Amazon. Uh, they're the thinner ones that are more close uh, to the thin plastic multi-placers that a lot of companies include. I I know a lot of people really, really love like the everlasting tips that you can get on Etsy, which they have a Black Friday sale coming up. I badly, badly want to like everlasting tips, um, but they just are a little bit wide for me. I really, really struggle with um, multi-placing with everlasting multi-placer tips. I wish, wish, wish that I love them because I love supporting small shops. Um, but I just, to be fair, it's been a f several months since I've tried. I should pull one out and try one again soon. Um, so we've got our wax and putty. And then we're going into a section that I have already started and spent some time on. Um, so the, the cover is pulled back already, but that's okay. Our minders will just, they'll just hang out and keep us company. So we are working on, we are on the first side of her shell bra. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like, cause she's very much this mermaid. So we're right here. <laughs> Let me grab a color and we'll get going. Uh, so how are you guys doing today? I hope that you are doing well and I missed you last week. I really, really missed you guys. Um, I put up a post in my community tab. I still had a few people message just to be like, is there going to be a live in chat this week? And I didn't have the chance to respond to those messages um, because I was, I was traveling. Um, my grandma passed away and uh, so I was with family and obviously focusing on family time and and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but that's where I was last week and everyone just, um, you guys are always so incredibly kind and gracious. So thank you, thank you, thank you for um, the kind words and the sympathy. Um, I'm doing I'm doing well um, with handling all of that and I'll talk about it more later, but I, I didn't wanna start off on a, on a down note. I just wanted to quickly explain why there was not a whip and chat last week. And honestly, I really did I miss it. Um, I I just was I was out of town. I didn't have a good way to record, and um, we were going pretty much nonstop. So I'll talk more about that later. But um, I'm glad to be back this week, <laughs> and um, it is going to be a busy week, you guys. Uh, but before I talk about that, let me talk about more about this kit. So uh, this is like I said, this is the daughter of the Sea King, which is one of the um, discontinued Mandy Manzano princess panels from Diamond Art Club. I honestly never thought I would get my hands on this one and it was just due to some, well, thanks to some help from a friend that I was able to find someone who was de-stashing and um, I ultimately decided to work on this one now because I, I I've mentioned in past whipping chats and other videos that I had a bit of a milestone coming up as far as the number of kits that I've completed. This is going to be the 100th diamond painting kit that I have completed. So um, I wanted that particular milestone kit to be something special just because I am really incredibly extra <laughs> and I like to make celebrations of anything and everything that I possibly can and that includes something as maybe silly to some of you guys with uh, as silly to some of you guys as a 100th completed diamond painting kit but um i i went back and forth for a while i really there were a couple of different kits that i considered working on and i then i, I kind of spooked i started to get cold feet about working on this one because i was like ooh, like it really is big and it's the really really old diamond art club drills like I don't know if I've got that in me right now, <laughs> but then I just, I ended up, when it came down to it, I literally had just finished my 99th kit 
I was like, okay, well, I want to diamond paint. I need to get something up. Um, I just decided to unroll this one and look at it. And as soon as I unrolled it to look at it, I was immediately like, this is the one. This is absolutely the one. It made me so happy to unroll it and see it. And I was like, I just, I need to work on her. <laughs> so um, I was going to zoom you guys in just a little bit. I've had some requests to try to zoom in so you can see more of what I'm doing. Um, it's really tricky to get a good angle, <laughs> so I have to say. So I'm trying. I'm not trying to make it difficult for you guys. Uh, but anyway, I have, I've been honestly pleasantly surprised and relieved Um that the diamonds in this kit, while not perfect, have not been a huge nightmare to work with. Uh, it's funny because I have noticed working on this kit that, especially side by side, you can absolutely visibly tell the difference between acrylic and resin drills, especially squares. And it's really funny because this kit has a mix some of these colors are resin and some of these colors are acrylic. Um, and it's, yeah, it's been interesting. Um, it definitely reinforces that I vastly prefer the look of resin drills over acrylic, especially squares. Um, but I am relieved that these haven't been a disaster to work with because that's always my biggest fear with pulling out older square kits from Diamond Art Club before they started making all their diamonds in house and their new squares are just magical. But in case you were curious, I don't know how well, I don't know if this is the best color. When we get to one of the skin tones, you'll probably be able to see it. These are totally acrylic drills. Um, yeah, they're not, these ones aren't going to show up super well in the tray, but acrylic drills, I, it's easier to tell when they're on the canvas. You'll see like a little bit of a gap in between the drills when they're on the canvas, almost like they're a tiny bit wider at the bottom, like at the base than they are at the top. They just sit different and they feel different as well. So uh, there's, there's a couple of light colors that'll be in the skin tones that we'll get to in a bit that I feel like I could tell just from looking at them in the container. I was like, oh my gosh, those are acrylic. <laughs> I lost a drill. I heard it. I felt it. Where did you go? Where did you go? Did you fall? Nope, not you. I hate when that happens. I hate when that happens. It happens too often. Okay, well, it'll turn up again someday. <laughs> probably, probably on, on my clothes or something. Uh, so anyway, it's been fun to work on this kit. I I started at the bottom and working my way up to the top. I think, I think that I am coming close, coming up on, getting close. Decided to mix up my phrases there. I think that I am getting close to the halfway point. Um, I don't have the entire thing unrolled because it's big, it's long. Um, so I just, I, I have either end kind of rolled a bit, so it's not taking up literally my entire table. <laughs> um, and, but I just, I think this is around halfway because we're now getting at the top part of her torso, but her hair is magnificently large. So it'll take a while to get, get through that. That takes up quite a bit of the top of the painting. <laughs> Um, but it's charm. It's charming to work on an older, an older diamond art club kit. It's there's like kind of a nostalgia factor to it. Makes me appreciate some of the changes they've made as well. I have to say. <laughs> so this uh, this putty is sticky. It's wanting to pull those diamonds um, back off when I press too hard. So um, the glue and the canvas are really nice on this kit anyway, even though it's an older kit. Um, so yeah, um, I'm hoping that I'll finish it here in maybe like the next week or week and a half. I have a lot of plans, a lot of kits that I need slash want to work on here before the end of the year. And so I am hoping that this kit doesn't, doesn't take me too, too long, but I'm making, I'm making good progress on it, I think. Um, 
so how about you guys? Are you working on any holiday kits yet? Or are you just kind of working on some other maybe like filler type kits like before we really get into the holidays? I'm looking forward to Jingle Drills, which my friend Lindsay is hosting. That's Emeralds and Fairy Lights, as well as Winter with DAC that Rachel Ray and Wolfpack are hosting. And then I have a couple other kits that I'd like to, to get to for some small shops as well. So very much looking forward to that. Um, yeah, so let's take a minute and talk about Black Friday because... It is currently Sunday and lots of shops are abuzz with talking about Black Friday plans. Um, Diamond Art Club previewed 10 kits, 20 kits today, uh, 20 kits today, 10 on Instagram, 10 on Facebook, and they have informed us, us as in the community, <laughs> that there will be 100 new releases on Black Friday. No, I did not even know that. Um, I, I did not even know that. I think that they, I don't know, I think maybe they made that decision a little closer to game time, but um, I will have a few sneak peeks for you guys this week. I don't think that all of the kits actually came in on time for sneak peeks to be sent out. So I don't think that we will necessarily see sneak peeks for all 100 kits, but I'm telling you what you guys, even after just day one, I, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. There's one absolute must have. Uh, there's one that's an almost certainly must have. And there's a third that I am hoping someone was sent as a sneak peek because I'd really like to see it unboxed. Um, the must have for me is the Chrisabug Fates kit that they previewed. The, the likely must have is the, the Herb Leonard Unicorn. And then there was a Pegasus. I'm blanking on the artist and the name. That's the one that I, I need to think about. That's on my maybe list. But the Chrysabug, that's a definite yes for me. Um, I adore, adore Chrysabug's artwork. And I love, 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 love that one. Um, and yeah, so I'm stoked, stoked for that. <laughs> uh, FYI, in case you were wondering... There will be a Countdown to Midnight Black Friday live. Details are still, like the, the little details are still being nailed down, but it is official and it's officially official. We're partnering with Diamond Art Club to make it happen. And um, Lindsay and I will be co-hosting. And basically all the other details are still being nailed down now the midnight release on black friday is just for people that are in the diamond tier it's not diamond and ruby it's just the diamond tier uh, and they get a six hour early access window and um uh then the general release is at is 6 a.m pacific so um we did this last year uh, it looked a little bit different. It wasn't like an official thing last year. Uh, but um, even the people that didn't necessarily, weren't necessarily in the diamond tier of the program, of the rewards program for Diamond Art Club, still enjoyed coming and hanging out, you know, seeing if there were any surprises. And um, it was just a really, really fun vibe. Um, and it, it just, I feel like it just built the anticipation <laughs> and stuff like that. So I am excited for this year's. I'm excited that Diamond Art Club is um, being a part of it real closely and stuff. So yay. <laughs> uh, stay tuned. There will be more official announcements and stuff coming. But um, uh, part of it is I, I didn't get things nailed down sooner because I was out of town and trying to, of course, prioritize like that. And um, then I think that and then it was the weekend and then it's just been busy for them, I'm sure, with prep. But Diamond Art Club isn't the only one that's going to have exciting things for us on Black Friday. I would be completely remiss if I didn't mention small shops. I want to show everybody as much love to small shops in the community and supporting them. 
especially as we're going into the holiday season, but I know that we're going to see some amazing Black Friday sales. Um, I really want to like list a bunch, but I'm honestly, I'm very worried that I, and I just know that I will forget people and I don't want anyone to take it personally um, at all. I just truly, my memory is not the best, uh, but I know Enablers Outpost is running their Black Friday sale already. They've got some amazing deals on pens. They've got some great licensed diamond painting kits. That Jaded Gem Shop is going to be running an amazing Black Friday sale. Uh, she's already hinting at it and is doing some giveaways on her Instagram and in kind of the lead up to Black Friday. Um, I know that like Lazy River, uh, Lazy River Diamond Paintings, they're going to be launching some new diamond paintings here in the next couple of weeks. Um, and there's just, there's so many. Those are just like really diamond painting related shops, I feel like, small shops. And I, I just, I feel terrible because I know that I'm missing people. But um, I will be keeping a close eye on like Instagram and on Etsy. Like I follow a lot of shops on Etsy. Um, that I'll be keeping an eye on as well. Lots of pen shop I'm sh shops I'm sure maybe having Black Friday sales. I'm trying to think, I think Lace and Lathe Works posted that they were running a sale on their pens, and um, I don't know if maybe Patty Wax will run a sale. Anyway, I'm just gonna say like, no matter what, and again, I just I have to say I'm sorry if I forgot your small shop. No matter what, like if you're able, definitely try to support some small shops in the community. Um, over Black Friday weekend and going into the holidays because uh, they're often just I say this in my small shop haul videos a lot but um, a lot of times small shop owners are just like fellow crafters like fellow diamond painters that just kind of took a business spin on things uh, but they're working out of their homes they're just small family businesses and they definitely need our love and support so yay small shops <laughs> I don't want to just be showing the love to larger, larger companies. Um, so, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you know of any small shops that are going to be, oops, I'm so sorry. I'm so klutzy. <laughs> let me know in the comments if you know of any small shops that are going to be doing some Black Friday sales that you want to mention and I'll keep an eye. I wonder if maybe I'll chat with my, my modmin team for the Diamonds and Emeralds Facebook group and see if maybe we want to like put up a post where like shop, maybe like a, a post where it's okay for like shop owners to post if they're running any Black Friday specials. I like that idea. I'll have to go go run that by, the, by my mods and admins. Um, so yeah. Yeah, yay, Black Friday fun times. I've been I've been saving up and trying to curb a lot of my spending um, just sort of in anticipation for Black Friday and my body is ready. <laughs> I'm very, very excited. So uh, I don't know what I'm going to do about this whole 100 kits from Diamond Art Club thing though, especially after day one. I already got some kits on my list. I guess I have a few days to think about it at least. <laughs> Uh, so let me fill you in just on some updates over the past two weeks because honestly, I feel like a lot, a lot has happened. Like, holy cow, a lot has happened. Um, so the last time we chatted, let me see. The last time we chatted, I think my mom was still in town. And I don't think, let me think, I think I filmed that video before she had to unexpectedly book a flight home earlier than she was planning because she got a call on Sunday morning. This was on actually on my birthday, which by the way, thank you to everyone who came to my birthday live. I had so much fun celebrating with you guys. Um, but my mom had really not wanted to like interrupt my birthday, even though I was like, mom, this is like really, really, really important. Of course, my birthday is not a big deal. Like, please tell me that you're you're not holding back on like something that's really really important just for my birthday but uh she got a call sunday morning uh that my grandma was declining and um that she should fly fly back home 
Uh, and so she booked a flight out. She wasn't able to get a flight out until the next morning, but she did make it. Um, and my grandma did pass away shortly after she got there. So um, it felt, it was very peaceful. And uh, my mom was just very grateful. She had said, she's like, I'll be okay if I don't make it. I feel like I've, you know, said my goodbyes and I've had so much amazing time with her um, and everything lately. Um, she's like, it would be okay, but I hope that I make it. And I'm, I'm thankful she did. Um, and my grandma was almost 92 years old. Honestly, she lived an amazingly full life. Actually getting emotional just thinking about it. Um, I don't cry a whole lot, but um, yeah, no, this is this is a bit emotional for me. Uh, so um, my mom is one of seven lots of brothers and sisters and I have um, I have a lot of cousins <laughs> a lot of cousins and most of us have kids a lot of well not most of us a lot of us have kids at this point and so my grandma has a, a lot of grandchildren and a lot of great-grandchildren um, <laughs> it's it's happy it's like happy emotions <laughs> Um, she was an amazingly kind and generous person. I have um, a lot of really wonderful memories with her. Um, oh, hold on, you guys. I do have a tissue. I'm a mess. <laughs> Okay, I can confidently say that I was actually not expecting to get emotional. <laughs> um, uh, I, I have lots of wonderful memories with my grandma, and um, I feel like I, I had closure too, and um, everything just about, uh, about it just felt very, just very, very peaceful, very sort of right timing. Um, she had been struggling a lot with various aspects of her health for years and it was almost like an ongoing like joke in a way that was like she is so feisty and she is such a fighter like literally nothing is ever going to get her down like she'll probably live to be a hundred just just to spite like all the curveballs that have been thrown her way um and uh, at the same time, though, like I said, it just, it all felt, I don't know. It was, it was, the whole thing was very peaceful. Um, so I did end up flying back um, because she was my, my last grandma, my last grandparent. Um, and I did have uh, a real, I had a good relationship with her. You know, there was a lot of distance. Uh, in here just because I moved across the country and all of that but she got to meet both she met both my kids um, and we talked to her on the phone <laughs> and stuff like that um, and my mom spent a lot a lot a lot of time with her in the assisted living facility that she was in um, the past few years and um, I just I spent a lot of time sort of reflecting on um, and the biggest part of my life that she was a part of was my childhood because we lived a few hours away from her. So when we would visit her and my and my grandpa, we would drive up and we'd stay there. We'd stay at their house for a few days. And so we just really got to do life with them in a really close way. Um, and I, I just really fondly focus on like the really warm and wonderful memories that I have with her and with um, my extended family and the absolute utter chaos that was especially Christmas when you know all of the aunts and uncles and cousins there would be like over 50 people in this little house and you couldn't hear yourself think and it was just oh my gosh just absolutely wild like <laughs> but it was it was wonderful too and there were shenanigans there there were there were antics and there was drama because you guys there are some really 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 strong personalities um 
in <laughs> my mom's siblings. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, so honestly, I, I mean, you know, sometimes someone wasn't speaking to someone else or there were, you know, there was a whole thing with <laughs> between, you know, these two people. Or, it was never a dull moment. I'll just say that. I am grateful that people were able to put the shenanigans aside for um, all of the, like, calling hours and funeral services and everything. Everything just felt like we were very much just, we were celebrating, we were grieving, but we were also celebrating, and that was really meaningful, and I'm really grateful for that. I'm glad I was able to go back. My brother flew back as well. And uh, I, Adam and the kids stayed here. Um, and um, my brother's uh, significant other stayed, stayed home as well. And uh, so it was just my brother and my parents. And we were talking like we didn't remember. We'd really think back and go, when was the, when was the last time that it was just the four of us with no significant others or kids? My brother doesn't have kids, but um, we we're like, I think it was when my when my dad retired, which was seven or eight years ago, um, that it was just the four of us, and so that was that was you know neat to kind of have that family dynamic again. Um, I I posted on my Patreon. I was like, well, here is my. Here's my parents' house, and here's the wedding dress <laughs> that I <laughs> that I wore on my wedding day, and it's still hanging in my my childhood bedroom closet <laughs> because I've not brought it out to California with me, et cetera, et cetera. So it was um, it was fun. It was it was fun in a way. Um, wish it could have been under different circumstances, but I you know I'm not gonna be sad that I got to spend time with with my family. Um, I really enjoyed getting to see my cousins, a lot of whom I haven't seen in a few years since before COVID, because um, we have not flown back since before 2020. <laughs> uh, uh, we're supposed to go back um, for this Christmas, though it'll actually be a January trip for us. Um, but yeah, so that is why I was MIA last week. Uh, like I said, I'm, I knew that you guys would totally understand and no one was going to be holding it against me or anything like that. And I appreciate the kindness and um, respect that you guys gave, gave me in that. So um, yeah, so as we're going into the holidays, that just kind of makes me feel like I want to say just... Um, I know that the holidays, whether it's, you know, Thanksgiving, if you're American and celebrating Thanksgiving, or as we're coming up on Christmas and a lot of other holidays that are um, important to you, depending on what your religion or beliefs you have, whether that's, you know, Hanukkah or, or any other religions, um, it, can, it can be hard because sometimes there's baggage, sometimes there's loss, sometimes there's hurt, and I just want to send you a lot of love if if the holidays are difficult for you for any reason at all and just let you know that you are you're seen your feelings are valid and um i hope i hope that the holidays are peaceful for you um just kind of shifting into other <laughs> other updates so unfortunately the timing could not have been worse for um, me to go out of town. Um, both of the kids got really sick when I was gone and Adam was having to handle all of it solo. He was supposed to be working and ended up having to take some time off work to be able to take care of the kids. Uh, but both kids were sick. Um, Connor ended up having strep throat. I think this is actually the first time he's had strep throat. Um, but he got sent home from school on like Thursday because he was saying that it hurt every time he swallowed. And uh, I immediately, like my brain twigged on like, I bet this is strep. Um, and so we got him to the doctor's office the next day, which was, when did I fly out? Did I fly out Saturday? 
I don't remember which day I, I might be getting my days mixed up. It really doesn't matter. I'm sure you guys don't really care that much, but we got him to the doctor the next day and uh, Connor by that point was spiking a high fever. Um, like we were having to go with both Motrin and acetaminophen to keep it down. Um, and uh, I was just like, this is this has got to be strep. Like this just, it has to be. Like I was watching him cringe every time he swallowed. Um, and so they did an in-office rapid strep test, which unfortunately came back negative. But thankfully the doctor sort of thought like, I think something is still going on. And so I ended up doing a swab and sending it off for a lab culture, which takes like more like 48 hours to come back because it has to like sit and develop basically. But since we were going into the weekend, we didn't end up hearing back about that until Monday. Um, and it was late in the day on Monday and I got like the notification <laughs> for like the patient portal, like, oh, a new test result is available. The doctor's office is already closed, but I think the lab just uploaded it, went and looked and I was like, oh my gosh, he is positive for strep. That meant that he needed to start antibiotics <laughs> right away, but we had to wait until morning to even get in touch with the doctor's office and get it filled. And it was, it was just, it was a whole thing. Meanwhile, Connor is miserable. Adam's trying to manage his fever and doing an amazing job, by the way. Um, he's an amazing dad and did a great job with all this, but it was a lot. There's a whole thing that came up with Micah that I'm not going to go into detail on because it's, it just doesn't need to be gone into detail, but it was um, an unfortunate uh, infection that came up that Adam had to deal with. And, and I, w it was, yeah, he's, he's calling me and I'm trying to like, give advice and help like over the phone, but I'm literally across the country and all I wanted to do was be here and taking care of my kids. Not that, not that I didn't think Adam could handle it. I knew Adam could handle it, but I'm a mama bear and I am like, because I am a stay at home mom, I'm the one that normally does handle all these things. And I just, I wanted to be here cause I didn't want Adam to be having to handle this by himself. Um, I was worried about my kids and I'm like, I just want to be holding and taking care of my kids and all of that. So that was, that was the hardest part, honestly, about being away was it's like, I, I needed that time to grieve and go through what I was going through with my grandma's passing and her services. But my, you know, my mind and my heart, like a lot of it was very much back, back here at home. And I just couldn't. I couldn't wait to get back and just be able to tap in and take care of the kiddos. Um, so thankfully both kiddos are doing much better. Um, the antibiotics really have helped Connor perk up. Unfortunately, um, prior to starting on antibiotics, Connor was contagious and did manage to share strep with Adam. Um, which really sucks. Somehow I, I don't have it probably because I was out of town. Uh, but so Adam has been dealing with that. Adam basically slept all of, you know, one or two days, um, as he was dealing with that. And I was like, dude, you've got to get you into the doctor's office so you can get a swab, <laughs> get a test and, uh, get some antibiotics going. Cause that's, what's going to help you feel better. Like it did with Connor. So he's, he's on that. He's been on antibiotics for, couple of days and it's improving but it just um if you've been around a little while you're probably like oh my gosh it's starting again um you can't make I, I can't make this stuff up and I'm not I'm not doing it for attention or I don't know some other type of thing um my family just especially my kids immune systems just don't seem to be the best um and it doesn't help that they both go to school and it's just schools or pure petri dishes um so yeah i'm kind of like okay here we go here we go let's strap in everyone let's take our vitamins let's wash our hands let's don't touch your face let's wear a mask let's wash your hands again <laughs> like i'm trying to do all of the things but i'm also just like i don't i don't look forward to this this time when people when we're when we're getting sick and struggling to stay healthy i feel like there was like last winter like it was a miracle if we went one week 
where no one was sick in the house. I feel like every Whip and Chat was like, basically a who's who on who's sick in, in my house this week. So we're trying to trying to do all the things, keep everyone healthy, because um, I got like a note from from one of my kids' schools that was just like, hi, I'm sure it was automated. Like, I'm sure it was automated, but I still just, it really did rub me the wrong way. Because <laughs> it was just like, hi, I just want to let you know that um, we noticed your kid minute missed this many days of school in this month. And, um, and then it was like a list of like statistics about like, you know, kids that don't have consistent school attendance and have lower scores or skills like in these areas and blah, blah, blah. And like if your child continues to like miss, miss school, then, you know, it's, but then we have to have this like meeting again. I'm sure this is all automated, but it was like a list of like, yeah, Connor missed three days of school in September. They were all because he was sick and we kept, we had to keep him home because the doctor told us to. So these are all like on the list. It said like, yeah, these are excused absences. As in they had a doctor's note and, you know, they were called in and everything. And I just wanted to be like, okay, sure. You go ahead and you call us in for that meeting about, about my, my kid missing too much school. And I just want to be like, what would you like me to do? What uh, do you want me to send a sick kid to school? Because I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not getting other kids sick and we're taking as many precautions and everything as we can. I'm being very prompt about getting them into the doctor, like so that if we can start medicine, then we do blah, blah, blah. Like I'm not just having my kids miss school willy nilly. Let's be honest in a very, very selfish, selfish way. Like aside from, of course, I want my kids to not be sick. In a selfish way, I would rather my kids be in school because I can get a whole lot more done around the house and everything if they're in school in the mornings. I want them to be in school, but I'm also not going to send a sick kid to school to get all his classmates sick. It's just not going to happen. Um, also, you're just going to send him home if he's in there and he's sick, so I don't know what you want me to do. So, anyway... So I'm just, I'm, especially after this month's absences where he had to miss several days, like four days because of, they got, they sent him home and then he still, he was too, he had a fever and it wasn't until after the weekend that we got the official diagnosis. And then it was like, well, then the rule is he can't go back to school until he's been on antibiotics for 24 hours. Like, I just was like, I can't, I can't win. I can't win. <laughs> Um, but I did have parent-teacher conferences, um, and I went to one for each of the kids um, last week, and it was good to connect with both their teachers and just talk about things and all that, so I'm glad I got to do that. Um, we had, I'm excited about this actually, we had family pictures today, uh, which normally we would just do like a mini session around the holidays. Um, and then use those pictures on Christmas cards. Um, since we live far from most of our family, especially our extended family, um, and don't post, we don't post, post a ton of our kids on social media in general. Um, we just like to use Christmas cards as a chance to, you know, share, share updates about the kiddos and stuff with people that live far from us. Um, and I do like having some uh, some pictures of the family uh, of us um, each year just to kind of see how things grow and sometimes it is nice to just have someone else doing that kind of the 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 photography portion because <laughs> I take lots of candid pictures of my kids but um, honestly there's a lot of pictures that <laughs> that I'm not in and so anyway so we did that today for the first time since before COVID so I actually contacted the photographer, which is someone who we've used before. She did like our kids' newborn sessions and we've done some other mini sessions with her in the past, but I sent her a message last night before we actually, you know, we did the session today. I just sent her a message and I was like, hey, I just wanted to let you know, like I'm really, really excited for this, but I was like, I'm, I'm kind of anxious, honestly, for a few reasons. I said in part because we haven't done one of these in like three years at this point. Um, and so in my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, we finally get to do these again. Um, I said, but also, um, I said, just my youngest is really a wild card. I don't know 
how much he's going to cooperate, like if at all. Um, and so I just told her, I was like, I, I'm trying to keep my expectations realistic and hold it loosely and just be, be thankful that like, we're going to have these pictures at all and be okay. If we don't get any like posed pictures, like it's fine. I was like, but I just needed to like say it all to you so that you're aware <laughs> what my mentality is going in. And she has kids as well. And she just sent back the sweetest message. She was like, it's totally fine. We're going to make it work. We'll follow the kids lead. And then I was so pleasantly surprised today, you guys. The kids did amazing. They were totally done. They let us know when they were done. <laughs> they stopped cooperating and started getting whiny. I had brought some Skittles for bribery, though. I grabbed them, like, as a last-minute thing on the way out the door. That was the best idea ever. They even, like, Micah cooperated. He only tried to, like, bolt for the parking lot once. <laughs> And I think we got some really cute pictures. So I'm excited to get those back. Unfortunately, I know I'm teasing you guys a little bit. I won't be posting them like publicly or anything because I, I keep, I try to respect my kids' privacy a bit more than that and try not to like post much in the way of like their faces on like public platforms like this one. But <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to get those back. Um, I finished this section. I'm not going to start another one because that's going to be a little bit more of a thing. But I was just going to also um, say, like, I've had a really fun weekend because I've had a house guest. And it's someone that you may well know. Uh, so Christy Ann, who has her own, she has her own diamond painting channel. Um, I think it's just her name, Christy Ann Hare. I'll link it below. But she's actually been staying with us over the weekend because she has had a couple of days of training for her new job at Disneyland. So uh, they haven't, oh, hey, here's that purple drill that went flying earlier. <laughs> um, she has a couple days of training and she's actually moving uh, from out of the area, like several hours out of the area. They're gonna be move. she and her, her boyfriend are gonna be moving down real soon. Um, but she had a couple of sort of one-off like days of training here. And um, I was like, well, why don't you just stay with me? I live 15 minutes from Disneyland, like come, and stay at our place and then it'll just be a lot less you know stressful and stuff for you to to get down there so she she came down on friday and we've been having a, a really fun visit and stuff like that um in between her being at disney and jade actually came down on friday as well and so the three of us hang out we were going to try to do a live on friday night but honestly we were all just really tired um, and so that ended up not happening, but, um, now that Christiane's going to be in the area, maybe we can make something like ha like that happen again soon. I don't know. We'll have to see, but, uh, so it's been a really fun visit. I actually had initially thought about trying to like grab her and, and rope her into like doing a whip and chat with me. Like, let's just actually just sit and chat and that would be super fun. But then we were just sitting here talking about other stuff and then she went to bed and I was like, Oh, I'm gonna film my whip and chat, but I guess it's gonna be without her. So, whoops, I'm sorry, Christia. Um, but she is super sweet. I really enjoy um, these start to finish videos that she does on her channel. She originated the idea um, where she she time lapses working on her kits, and um, then she puts it together in a video and does like some chatting in between, like showing some of these time lapses. And um, it's just really relaxing and enjoyable to watch. It's really satisfying to see a kit come together as well. So uh, go take a look. She wants to see if she can hit 2,500 subscribers before the end of the year. And you guys, she's really not that far away. So can you help me out and do your thing? And if you haven't checked her out, go and check her out. If you like the content she's putting out, subscribe to her channel. It would probably really make her day if we could be a part of helping her hit 2,500 subscribers before the year's out. And I think it's totally, totally doable. So um, we'll see when she watches this video and when she sees that, she'll be like, Katie. <laughs> so quick sip of water. Anyway, you guys, um, as far as what's coming up this week, I have a few sneak peeks for you guys. 
actually one is being go going to be going up later today. So today's gonna be a two video day. If you're watching this whip and chat the day that it goes up here on Monday, um, because Diamond Art Club is mapped out like when our, when various kits are gonna be previewed and then we can coordinate our, our, our sneak peeks with those. So um, you'll be seeing a sneak peek from me later today and a couple more sneak peeks in the week. Um, we'll do our Black Friday countdown to midnight live. It'll be Thursday night. Um, right now, the tentative start time is 11 p.m. Pacific time, an hour before the Diamond Art Club releases go live for Diamond tier members. So that's the current tentative <clears throat> plan. Um, that may change, especially now that Diamond Art Club has been like, actually, we're doing, we're dropping a hundred kits. And so I don't, maybe we're going to need more time to talk before they go live. Um, but I have a couple other unboxings I'd like to get up for you guys. And at some point I'll finish this kit and have a post review, but I don't know that that's going to be, I don't think that's going to be this week. So thanks for hanging out with me in uh, this whip and chat. I hope that you enjoyed it. Sorry that I got literally teary there in the middle. That is not really usually my MO, but um, yeah, so that happened. <laughs> but uh, oh, by the way, do you guys notice? Look at these skin tones. Okay, it looks super scary up close. It, it works a little bit better when you pull back. But some of these like very first Mandy Manzano princess panels that Diamond Art Club did, um, the artwork itself, hold on, I'm yawning. <sighs> Excuse me. The artwork itself is, is very much a stained glass effect. And that inherently, like the original artwork, the, the skin tones do look honestly modeled. Um, and so it was translated really literally. You'll see this actually a lot with the creatively stitching conversions because creatively stitching carries cross stitch charts of a lot of the Manny Manzano princess panels. If you take those charts and convert them to a diamond painting on a blank canvas, a lot of times you will see similar kinds of things going on with these skin tones. So I have decided not to try to rechart or make any changes. I am doing this exactly as charted. Um, I am not really looking to take on like a bigger project as far as like recharting and mapping out skin tones. I kind of just want to work on this one as is and just let it be what it is and be okay with that, if that makes sense. That's just my approach and that's how I'm enjoying this kit and how this kit is meaningful to me, but that's just, that's just me. Anyway, I'm really gonna let you guys go. If you made it all the way to the end, would you like to maybe put up a mermaid or a seashell emoji? Is there a seashell emoji? I don't know. If not, I know there's a mermaid one. Um, let me know what you're up to and what you were working on and how your week is going. And um, like I mentioned, if you know of any small shops running, like diamond painting related, preferably, um, or, you know, accessories, you know, somehow diamond paint kits, accessories, whatnot, uh, running Black Friday sales, feel free to share them in the comments below. I want to make sure that I'm keeping an eye out on all the things. So, and feel free to you guys go take a look at the comments below and see what people mention as far as small shop sales. So anyway, uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday week. If you are celebrating Thanksgiving on Thursday, I hope that you have a safe and peaceful and wonderful holiday with uh, if loved ones. If you're with loved ones or if you're flying solo, uh, if you want some company, come hang out on our countdown live and stuff like that. Um, love to hang out with you. So have a wonderful week again, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And yeah, I'll talk with you in the next video. Bye, friends. Mm -hmm.